Hello, I'm Robert Eggby and welcome to the Geopathic Stress Fighters Club, the dark side of dowsing where governments and people in high places don't want to know us, or more importantly, they don't want to know about geopathic stress. And I hope that in the next little while, some of you will switch on to the problem that is out there on every block, every street in America. It's geopathic stress. And homes, offices, buildings, plots of land, parks, and victims are crying out. Why didn't somebody tell us? The handout, which was designed for a three-hour workshop planned before um, coronavirus, explains in detail how to be a remote dowser and healer. And the way is relatively easy, and you may think of yourself as a savior, an angel, a wizard, or something like that, but that's ego stuff, so just push it away. In the three years I've been actively performing remote dowsing and healing, yesterday I did my uh, 438th case an apartment near Vancouver, Western Canada. So I just think of myself as a home and office cleaner, a daddy mop, so to speak. That's the other idea. That's the other thing about dowsing and geopathic stress. You have to have a little bit of a sense of humor, otherwise you go nuts. So let's talk about challenges. First of all, first of all, we need to change slide. That's good. Armchair dowsing. <laughs> the challenges of distant dowsing and remote healing. The first challenge is get used to distance. The earth is nothing but a nice chunk of rock that's flying through space at 73,000 miles an hour or something like that. It's accessible. The second challenge, get used to the idea that you in your pajamas and imitation fur-lined slippers can professionally heal an earth energy problem in some remote corner of that rock. The third challenge is recognize that there is an energy force in the universe that is ready, willing, and able to use your services. You may call it cosmic forces, uh, infinite intelligence, the creator, the source of my being, Allah, God, Jesus, whoever you pray to. You may even, if you're a bit of a atheist, you may want to say, uh, in the power of love invested in me. There are all sorts of options that you have. Yes, it does work better if you use the plural, get away from the I stuff. Um, we use the term Holy Spirit. It's an easy and acceptable sort of name, and it works in most places and in most minds. The fourth challenge, the booklet, the handout, was really designed for a three-hour workshop. So, And we have less than 60 minutes, so I've got to get on with it. Uh, so I'm going to talk about two important aspects. Our studies have shown that there are countless people, families, battling the rigors, of geopathic stress. The World Health Organization claims 30% of all homes around the world are in, impacted by geopathic stress. So we have a job to do. And the problem is that people living in these places have absolutely no idea what's bothering them, why they're taking pills, why they have to go to the doctor, why they check into clinics. And worse still, the people in authority from the White House right the way down to the local city council, have no idea, or at least they don't want to know about it. And this includes the medical profession. So for the next little while, let me share with you some things that may get you started on the road to being a remote dowser and healer. Trees. Trees are the symbol of geopathic stress. They're the visible symbol of geopathic stress. Whenever you see malformed trees, bent trees like these, you've got geopathic stress. Geopathic stress is rampant, and uh, especially when there's clay involved in the ground. 
this was used to be in a park in uh, New Jersey, Springfield Park, and the children would often come by and say, oh, look at that, look at that cute little tree. Oh, look at that strange little tree. It was just there. It couldn't even put a park bench by it. Well, we told them about geopathic stress and uh, that we were going to clear it. And we did actually clear the place. And then just recently, I hear, uh, actually, I found out that uh, they had been, they came along and cut all these trees down that you see in the picture. I guess uh, it was a little bit of a, a problem for them. Now here's a house that's been next to geopathic stress for a lot of years. Um, these are the sort of things that it's amazing that when you tell people that they've got geopathic stress around them, they don't believe it. Then you take them outside and say, oh, is that why I can't sleep? Is that why my kids are always complaining? That is why. This is the story of a school. There are two schools, the Aleta Crichton School and the Alexander Denbo Elementary School. And both on the, each, each uh, on one road. The Aleta Crichton School had so many problems, they decided to pull the school down and rebuild it. They used the same plans of the original school and they built it exactly on the same site. And we saw this problem. And so we told them, we doused the problem. And uh, we went along and talked to the principal of the Alexander Denbo School and he said, oh yes, I understand where you're coming from, clear it. And we cleared it for them. But that's a, an isolated incident of somebody actually giving us permission to clear a school. But you see how nuts people are, so ignorant people are about geopathic stress. Kind of very sad, but uh, anyway. And so the, the school now will be open shortly. Here's another example of um, we do uh, these sort of things um, as a public service. But this was a lady, a lady who was just qualified as a nurse and she'd been offered a job at the Wilmington Hospital in Delaware. But she wanted to check to see if there were geopathic stress zones. Yes, there were. We cleared them and she accepted the job and she's working there. That's the sort of thing you need to work. Uh, many, many hospitals are actually um, infected by geopathic stress. Another public service um, we did was for the Concertabel Orchestra building in Amsterdam, Holland. It's a famous orchestra. If you don't know too much about classical music, they perform beautiful music there. They had a problem and the secretary of the president called us and said, uh, could you check the building? And we did. And um, we cleared it for them. The street on the right hand side, on the sidewalk there by the building where the uh, there's a geopathic stress, people used to frequently trip over and complain to the <laughs> to the orchestra people <laughs> that there was uh, something in the sidewalk that made them fall over. And uh, so now they're happily uh, walking by, no problem at all. That's one of the things about geopathic stress. It can actually cause people to trip over and they don't know what they've tripped over because there's nothing to see. We, while we have a lot of very nice cases, we have some very sad cases. The lady, uh, Lynn and Kirk, her husband, lived in this house in California for many years, 26 years. And he slept on the geopathic zone in the bottom of the picture on the right hand side. And uh, when his health deteriorated, he did a, a lot of carving in uh, the garage, which is in the top part of the building where there was a geopathic zone. He never escaped from being in agony. He went through every sort of magic, every sort of treatment, every sort of operation that you can think of. And finally, and after 26 years, Lynn decided they had had enough and they were going to move. But she didn't know anything about trees, because if she had known about the trees outside the house they were going to buy, she would have thought twice because the malformed trees were there. 
Anyway, they lived in this house a couple of years, and finally, uh, the silent killer claimed Kirk's life, and he died last um, last summer into the fall, September, and uh, 2019. And finally. Uh, Lynn called us and said, could you check our houses? And I checked both the houses. And then she cried in absolute sort of, it blew her mind. And she said, why on earth didn't somebody tell us? In 30 years, why didn't somebody tell us? Nobody seems to have an answer to that one. Nobody seems to have an answer. So welcome to Google Earth. It's free and browsing uh, various places worldwide is a great education. The thing about Google Earth is that it's free and you can down download it onto your laptop. It's best to work with a laptop of at least a good 10 inches if you're going to do map dowsing. No, yeah, because it's wonderful because it allows you to douse property land anywhere on the globe that's marvelous and the, uh, there's an additional uh, benefit too because in mo many 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 cases you can actually go down to ground level and uh, see uh, get pictures of uh, the various places that you've been dowsing and the thing i want to uh, stress about uh, google earth is that the way to learn it uh, there are some lessons on uh, uh, YouTube, but just get, explore what they have to offer. And th there's nobody watching you. There's no teacher. There's no critic watching you. Just explore the different things. Uh, you're able to save images. Um, you can actually go back in time and see different scans of a property. Um, you can create uh, pathways. And on those pathways, you can have a, you can, a dows. Um, I use yellow lines in my uh, work, but uh, you can have blue lines, red lines, whatever lines you want to. And um, you have the ability to actually make a report on your dowsing, as uh, I will show you. So don't worry, get yourself a copy of, uh, of Google Earth. And explore because it opens up an opportunity for um, dowsing. Um, one of the things about dowsing, before I get into this particular picture, is that uh, find a place near your house or your way your home, and find out that, that it's it's got geopathic stress zones. Use a dowsing rod to find a geopathic stress zone. Just make a mental note of where it is, then go back onto. Uh, Google Earth, bring up the house or the place where you found the geopathic stress zone and douse it on the on the screen. Douse it with the same way. But use a pendulum on the screen, a pendulum and a pointer. I talk about this in the uh, handout. So that's the way that you do it. Um, OK, where are we? <laughs> We're in this is the Great Eastern Highway in Western Australia. And it's a good example of distance dowsing, distance dowsing. First of all, it's uh, the house on the right hand side is a farm and it belonged to, belongs to a lady who likes to ride horses through her property, which are the, the fields below. And uh, she, her complaint was that she always see, sees nasty energies while she's riding and feels badly about it. So we douse the place and sure enough, we, we douse and these the pins reflect the dowsing points of uh, the geopathic stress. Once you have those pins in, that comes on with Google Earth, you can draw a line, I, I use yellow, and uh, link the pins together. And there you have the track of the geopathic stress zone, which you have to clear. Now, before you finish, there is another part, and it's very important for the client. And that is you can put an, uh, a data box up in the top left-hand corner. And so, and that is, and you can slug it, uh, lot, whatever the address is. 
and then the, the details, which is uh, it will go something like a subterranean water vein flowing north about 21 inches wide, 180, 160 feet down over clay and fissures, creates a geopathic stressor. Just put in the details of what it is and add the, a warning that prolonged exposure um, can affect the uh, immune system of uh, humans, animals, pets, and vegetation, whatever it is, and the day and the time that you actually cleared the property. And so that would be the picture that you send to the client, and hopefully they'll send you a donation, or if you want to bill them, or if you're doing it as a public service. But it shows that you are a professional, and that's the whole idea for that. Now, how do you do all these things? Well, it's Job's decree. At least that's a system I have used and uh, perfected, I think. Job's decree. Yeah, the prophet appears in Jewish and Islamic literature, but uh, we are just interested in his technique to heal things. So we refer to it as a decree. It's simple, a decree technique. It's simple and it works quite well. <clears throat> so this is the primary decree. In the name of the Holy Spirit, and that's uh, I explained that earlier on about the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Holy Spirit, we decree that the geopathic stress zone running through this property be transmuted and converted into that which is good and beautiful. That, that those four lines will clear a geopathic stress zone. You can stand on a geopathic stress zone and say those four lines, and immediately while you're saying it, it will be switched off. It's as simple as that, and we've actually done that. Um, let me tell you about this little plot that we did. I had uh, <clears throat> a walking path from Birmingham to Pemberton on the rails to trail um, pathway there. We never had any animals, any wildlife, any birds. So, and, and, I, and Betty Lou and I always felt heavy underfoot when we walked and we knew there were geopathic stress zones. We didn't know how many. I remotely doused them and found 19 over a three quarter mile stretch. So I, I said, we're going to clear these. And I uh, uh, put a note out that, uh, and that attracted uh, four young dowsers who wanted to learn how to clear. I did a 15, 20 minute session with them and I actually gave them the printed uh, form, the uh, decree that I'd just shown you. And we, we all together, we stood on a, on a geopathic stress zone and one of them actually read the decree. And while they were reading the decree, you could feel the geopathic stress zone just being obliterated, annihilated switched off if you want. In the next two hours, each one of them worked on clearing the uh, 19 um, geopathic stress zones. And uh, now we were waiting for the birds and the wildlife to return. This only happened in March. So, but uh, and we told the parks people so they are aware of what we were doing. It said, but that was all we used was the primary decree. Transmute and convert into that which is good and beautiful. Clearing is one thing. Um, uh, clearing is one thing, but healing is another. A house can be suffering from negative memories. Um, particularly if people there have had many, many years of, of uh, bad sleeping nights, uh, people in pain, people in agony. It all leaves memories, and the memories are stored in the walls and the ground and the roof. In metaphysics, it's called the Akashic Records, and one reads them through psychometry. But in this case, um, they should be addressed, and we do this with the support decrees. And this, there are two of them here, and we use, normally use both. From this moment, we decree that all energies in this place are now uplifting, 
inspiring, beneficial, healing, and loving. So what you've done is that you've actually neutralized the geopathic stress zone, and you're now replacing energies, all the energies in the house or the building, with uplifting, inspiring, beneficial, healing, and loving energy. And we also add that <clears throat> we decree that any old negative memories are also transmuted into that which is good and beautiful. This can also include uh, spirits and things like that, if you want. Um, what I'm suggesting are these uh, decrees that you can use, and they're based on what I have done in the past, but you can change things to whatever is works for you is the way to go. I'm just showing you the way you could do, you create your own way, and uh, that would be wonderful. The final decree, the final decree, uh, is to hold the situation permanently, uh, wrap it up for eternity for whatever it is. In other words, it's got to be permanent. Most people expect it when you clear a house that it's going to be permanent. It isn't just going to come back next week. So in the final decree is, in the name of the Holy Spirit, these decrees are permanent and now exist until the end of all time, the end of all time. And we ask this in your name. Amen. Before I go on to uh, Paris, which this picture shows, I do want to uh, just stress a couple of points. When you are using the decrees, be enthusiastic about delivering the decree. Be forceful, enthusiastic. Just believe it. Oh, yes, that goes without saying. But just do it with some enthusiasm. In other words, you really want this to happen. And it's going to happen. You believe it's going to happen. So, I mean, a little tiny voice, no, um, isn't going to get you anywhere. You need a nice strong voice of authority that you are commanding the decree to work for you. Um, sometimes uh, this, you may, this may help you. You don't have to do it, but it may well help you. Occasionally, I feel the need to be on a clearing, cleaning site. I, I, I need to be present. So I imagine myself flying in and around the building while sounding the decree. This is called mental projection. It's not astral projection, it's mental projection. And there is a difference. Uh, it just adds a little bit of extra finesse to the decree. Now, you may well ask the decree technique, how does it work? Don't bother to ask, <laughs> because everybody has a solution, and I don't think any of them are right. Just use it and enjoy. And some people say, what do you call it? And I usually answer intense prayer or focus prayer, mental projection, practical imagery. The human mind is a powerful instrument, so you shouldn't be held back by limitations. So enjoy the ride. So, Paris, here we are. When you start to work globally, you'll come across some interesting places. The girl who lived upstairs uh, from this bistro or bijou suffered. Um, and so we cleared the place for her. And we thought, well, we're in Paris, let's have a look downstairs. And the picture came up on Google Earth, and it brought back memories of my journeys to Paris and Montmartre, which was wonderful. Anyway, and I can just imagine myself sitting in one of those chairs. So <laughs> I digress. When dowsing properties, always look for ley lines, spirals, which are normally beneficial, but also hot spots. And these show up as negative points. One of the things before I get into hot spots, let me digress one for you'll find that a geopathic stress zone that is affecting the third floor of the property of a high rise such as this 
will also affect every floor right from bottom to top. When you clear that geopathic stress for that third floor, you're also clearing all the, the effects of geopathic stress right from the base, basement right through to the top floor. That's one of the sort of side benefits of um, remote dowsing, yeah, that you also clear vertically as well as horizontally. It's one of the sort of miracles of that. Um, we were going to, I was going to talk about the um, hot spots. You'll find when you douse, when you douse a building, always look for uh, negative entities for one, but hot spots, and they're very common. It's very common for, I, I imagine that one in six, one in 10 people have hot spots. And the hot spots are normally come about from electrical appliances or more importantly, crystals, an intense concentration of crystals. And we found this one in uh, a client's house when we did a client's house in uh, New York uh, State. And uh, it came up. And what is the importance? Well, crystals are for healing. And when people are, have geopathic stress zones that they know nothing about, they rely on crystals to, to counteract this negative force that they have in the house. And sometimes they have bowls and bowls of crystals and things like that. Now, the thing about crystals is that they amplify healing. They also amplify any other energies that may exist around. And they also amplify geopathic stress. Uh, this one here, as I said, was in, with a client in uh, New York State. And uh, they had to use a hoist to lift the 100 pounds of crystal. That, and that was a hot spot. That showed up as a hot spot. So if you get into remote dowsing and healing, you will hear some fascinating stories. But you'll also receive letters of praise and thanks. And if you have a web or a, a blog, it's good to start a testimonials page. I have many testimonials, but this one is interesting. And it's kind of humorous. Remember, geopathic stress reduces the immune system in humans, animals, and pets. Yes, so she wrote, my dog sleeps in her old spot next to me, and the two dogs don't fight now. My pig no longer constantly beats on the door. We are all feeling much better. Thank you so much. Collect these testimonials because they become part of your your website if you develop a website for your on your services. Geopathic stress lines exist in many places throughout the world, including highways, particularly intersections. And I'll be getting at that in a moment. My slides seem to be a little uh, working on their own today. Um, let's look at options for remote dowsing and healing. Um, you can um, be a local dowser and douse on the home front, family, friends, relatives. And uh, generally, you don't get a high profile, but you just keep on working. And uh, it's good for you and uh, it's good for the people you help. You can also set up a business, local or global, uh, using uh, Google Earth. And um, perhaps have a where you need to have a, a a website, and you also need to post your operation, facilities or services on Twitter, Facebook, or any any of the other ones, the social the social columns. So there is that option for you. You can also be become an investigative dowser and promote dowsing and do some of the investigative, like check City Hall. Does City Hall have a, a geopathic stress zone? If they have a turnover of uh, employees, may well indicate the presence of a geopathic stress zone. So check it out and let them know. In other words, promote dowsing. You can also work with academics and do research and uh, publishing as well. So. That there are various options you can use uh, for remote dowsing and healing. 
um, traffic. I was talking about traffic, uh, geopathic stress um, in highways and intersections causes momentary losses of consciousness. It's actually happened to me. You just become totally confused and you know where you are, but you're just confused. Um, and that is, it it's affects the serotonin levels. Apparently, the doctors say it, as it affects the serotonin levels of the um, of the mind and it, but it's very brief it's very brief but it's just that little touch that um, causes um, uh, confusion and when you're in a uh, going through an intersection uh, that's dangerous the universe the engineers at the university of pune pune in india have had uh, six dowsers on a six foot nav unit working and um, the uh, here's the strategy. The the nav unit measures about six feet, and it is designed to uh, pick up the magnetic earth energy and uh, work with it. The problem is it's heavy and bulky to mute, to use. So they use dowsers, and they have a team of six dowsers working at the university, working with the engineers on this. Uh, particular problem. The problem is the Mombasa Pune Expressway, where the uh, scientists uh, uh, show or indicate that 30% of the accidents and fatalities are the cause of geopathic stress zones. When we mentioned this to the Department of Transport in Trenton, New Jersey, they thanked us very much and we never heard anything again and they're rebuilding the highway over it. So, you know, it's uh, it's the same old story. Uh, thank you very much. Good night. Good bless. <laughs> Get away out of here. Um, I enjoy investigative dowsing. Um, I got so tired of trying to tell commercial property owners that they have a geopathic stress zone, so we aimed higher. <laughs> <laughs> but first of all, let me go back. Um, as I say, my slides are jumping ahead of me or going back to me. This is one of the scientific reports and they are um, available on uh, um, Google. I just put in geopathic stress, uh, uh, University of Pune, India, and it'll come up. The interesting, and this explains who was involved and all the scientists who are involved in the geopathic stress um, business. Um, this is interesting because it not only shows the map, um, it says the identification of geopathic stress zones are done by using the Elrod dowsing and confirmation of it is done by using uh, at the nav meter. So, yes, uh, dowsing is making uh, quite a name for itself in India. And uh, this is reflected enthusiastically in the Times of India, the newspaper, the big newspaper in India. So uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. Perhaps, perhaps just one day, the Guardian in England, which is critical of geopathic stress, because they pretend it doesn't exist, and also newspapers in uh, the United States, We'll, go, we'll start talking about these things because they've been sadly amiss. Okay, the investigative dowser looked at the Santa Anita Park in Arcadia, California, where over 30 horses died in racing last year in 2019. And look at all the geopathic stress zones running through the racetrack. We could clear that geopathic race track in a, just a few minutes. We offered our services to the Los Angeles Times, uh, the owners of the racetrack, the uh, health people, but nobody took up the offer. The LA uh, Times editor did mention it to his reporters at the track, but nothing came of that either. So and they've just started the new racing season. So let's see what actually happened. I posted the story on this on my blog and um, it's been on Twitter. And um, so until one of these days, somebody will call and say, hey, can you 
um, do something about that. And we will, we'll clear it as a public service. This is a hospital. As I said, uh, geopathic stress zones are found in hospitals, and this is a very good case. It's the Virtua Voorhees Hospital in uh, New Jersey. And you can see that uh, I left all the pins in for you to see how you would do a large building. Um, and um, the problem is there are like five or six floors, and each floor has these particular geopathic stress zones. Um, and people don't like to be there. People don't like to be there. We've had all sorts of reports saying, no, I didn't like the Voorhees Hospital. I didn't like the Voorhees Hospital. So I'm thinking of writing a book, uh, <laughs> another book, The Silent Killer in Famous Places. Kind of sad, really. This is the George Eastman House in um, Rochester, New York. And it's where George, East, uh, George Eastman actually spent his last years in agony and pain, as his uh, autobiography says. And it was in these the corner of the house where the geopathic stress runs. And it still does, apparently. I think I have actually, we've actually removed it, but it did. We have uh, the yellow recording of that. So that's one. It's uh, the silent killer in famous places. Um, for 18 months ago, they opened the new U.S. Embassy in London with all the PR stuff and uh, wonderful tapes and balloons and goodness knows what. A great looking place, except it has geopathic stress zones. As we doused, <laughs> here they are, you see the U.S. Embassy in London. We, um, we actually called the Philadelphia Architects. And the receptionist said there was no one there with knowledge of geopathic stress. Thank you very much indeed. They didn't even want to know about it. They didn't even want us to tell them about it. So we haven't. And the, the problem is still there. And just we're just waiting for somebody to say, hey, there's geopathic stress there. Another famous place, a geopathic stress zone, flows through the White House. We haven't told them yet because we've only just done this, but it will be interesting to hear their reaction. Maybe I'll be arrested and whatever, but no, it should be interesting to hear their reaction if they do, or maybe they'll just turn a blind eye. If you didn't know, uh, my book, The Silent Killer, uh, Hunting the Silent Killer Below, Hunting and Healing Geopathic Stress, uh, has restored my faith in publishing. It has received the Independent Press Award 2020 in the environment category. So it's um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. It helps when I make submissions to people about geopathic stress to include a copy of my book with the uh, sticker for the press award. So it's one of the things that you can do. If I can do it, you can do it too. Get out there and create a Create a mark, create a, a way. One thing, if you do start offering a remote dowsing and healing service, is a suggestion to set up on your business card. It's on the back of the business card, which most people leave blank. Geopathic stress cleared permanently. Homes, apartments, offices, buildings, farms, proposed developments. You can use this as an idea. Just change it, change the names. Email your name and address to be doused. OK, it's important that people email uh, their problems to you, not on the phone. Ask them not to phone you, but email you. One, because it gives you an, a paper, a printed paper to work with. It also avoids you having to listen for 15, 20, 30 minutes to somebody um, explain all the different problems. So all it really boils down to is geopathic stress. 
it's also uh, <laughs> it's also free therapy for a whole lot of people when they call in so <laughs> um, just ask for email name and address to be doused and uh, say it's fast safe and confidential in your phone number so you can use that if you wanted a, a suggestion for a business card So this is just a picture of me working uh, with the mask for coronavirus out in the uh, woods, which I adore, and all the trees are relatively straight on this world. We hope the trees on your land are straight too, because if they're bent and malformed, that's geopathic stress. That's geopathic stress. So thank you very much indeed. Um, you can get the, uh, if the uh, American Society of Dowsers doesn't have a copy of my uh, handout, it's 17 pages incidentally, um, email me at uh, robert.egby at yahoo.com and uh, I will gladly send you a copy of that. I'm glad they send you a copy by email. Thank you. So, thanks for being here. Thanks for being, and uh, all best wishes, all best wishes to you and becoming uh, an armchair dowser, an armchair healer for distant people who are hurting because of geopathic stress. Thanks for being, stay well, swing well, and heal the world.